Hi everyone, today I just want to show you how to get started with your LEGO combat robot designs and which electronics to choose from. I'm not going to be going over the options that kind of suck or like there are some that are way cheaper but it's just not worth it. You won't get a good result out of them so I'm just going to be going over a few options that I think will give you the best positive experience and the most fun. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start off with batteries. So I'm not going to talk about this one much, this is a Lego battery. I'm going to just tell you why I don't recommend it um, and why we allow third party batteries in the CRBL. Um, it's because several reasons. Number one, you got um, actual AA or AAA batteries in them and it just takes time to replace. You got to be able to remove the battery pack between every single fight if you want to keep your batteries at full power and that's just a hassle, especially in a live convention hall. Um, also, these don't give you much power. They will cause some really lame fights, in my opinion. Um, it, it takes up so much space, too. For one of these batteries, you need two of these little receivers to go with it for a robot that has anything more than just drive. So, yeah, we're going to go into our third-party batteries now. Um, so, I'm going to start off with this. It's a little older product, the Bowiz 2.0. And... I'm not seeing any sponsorship from anyone in this video, so this is all just my opinion. Um, this is a pretty powerful little battery. It's way smaller than this big old chunky thing. Um, it's like four by four by eight studs, and you get these four power functions ports. You don't need to worry about any of these in your robot. Forget about those. This is Bluetooth, and I'll show you how to set this up in a little bit. You got your little power button here, which turns it on. Funny thing, sometimes it takes multiple times to click it to actually turn it off. There we go, got it that time. Um, the big thing that I really like about these is you can just plug in your charger. You don't need to open it up every time you want to replace batteries. It has a LiPo inside. Um, you get like twice the power from a LEGO battery pack in this, even with a much smaller size. The downside is it's really expensive. Other option is the Boas 3.0, which is the upgraded Boas 2.0. Um, once again, you got a button to turn it on. You get these nice little lights, and I've never had the issue where you got to click it multiple times, which is nice. You plug it in as well. Um, you get two of the power functions ports instead of four on the last time, but you get four powered up ports. So if you're used to going three power functions motors, you got to adjust. And I'll be going over all those motors in a moment. Um, this one's actually one stud longer than the other battery, but the upper dimensions are pretty much the same. Um, your holes are a little bit lower, and this is actually even more powerful than this battery pack, which is nice to know. Also, with the battery over current protection, you'll have the issue where you're running a 600 pound spinner on like one motor and one battery. Your robot's not going to like that, so what will happen in that case is if you overpower your battery, the current gets too high, instead of starting a fire, it's just going to shut down. And this battery could actually handle much higher loads than this can, so you could power way tougher weapons with this. And if you're new, even though this is expensive, I would recommend going with this. You'll just have a way better experience with your robots. Alright, that covers batteries, let's get to the motors. I'm actually going to start with the two options I would recommend for drive motors. So we got our two different L motors. We got a power functions L motor and a powered up L motor. The big difference is actually the cords they have. So they're not tangled. With your power functions cord, you got this little plug that will go on these inner ports. And with your powered up plug, it will go on the outer ports. This one only goes with your Bowes 3.0, so if you are getting a Bowes 2.0, don't use this motor. So, um, these motors are actually pretty identical in performance. Um, maybe this one is slightly better, but I haven't really noticed the difference. Really, another thing that I note is that the powered up motor is a stud longer than the power functions motor. Other than that, they're pretty much the same with dimensions. They each got all these nice little connection holes, which is good for your pins and axles to help hold them in place and make your bot durable. Um, if you were to use a Boas 2.0, I would recommend starting with a L motor for your drive. Two of them for each side, obviously. And um, if you're going with the Boas 3.0, unless for whatever reason you want to use these for your 
um, weapon, I would actually use these for your drive. So, really my suggestion to start would be a BOAS 3.0 with two of these Power Functions L motors for drive. Alright, so um, let's get into our weapon motors real quick. So, one of our first options actually is if you want to use something like this motor and use two of them, I've seen some pretty successful robots try that. Like if you just twin these, gear them together, um, you'll get the power of two of these motors and you can power some pretty tough weapons with that. Um, another option if you need a bit more space would be to use this XL motor. Um, this is pretty nice for powering spinners but it's rather slow compared to the other motor so you'll need to gear it up. Um, if you use two of these that's really effective in lifters because this is a slower and more powerful motor and I've seen success twinning these having enough power to actually lift an opponent and I'm actually working on something like that right now hopefully it works out um, my, my favorite type of motor is the buggy motor um, it's a really old and discontinued motor by Lego um, discontinued in 2001 if I remember right um, this is actually a clone of that motor because that motor is so rare and hard to find really expensive. Um, I'll pull up a picture in a moment but the difference you'll see is that where you have the black end in the back of this and your wire coming out of the end you will actually have a little red plug for an extension cord um, and that's how you plug in your motor. That's a real 5292 buggy motor. You'll see the red plug in and um, about the motor itself you'll have two different ports that spin actually. You'll have an outer port and an inner port. Your inner port spins 1700 to 1600 RPM and your outer port is around 1300 RPM so inner port is for a little bit more speed if you need it. Uh, it is a weird connection with your motor despite this being the knockoff this has the exact same dimensions with the exception of the plug end so um, you'll get these weird curves around these holes so you gotta be mindful of that when you're building. Um, it is difficult to connect and it takes some practice if you are using this for your weapon though, you got to keep in mind that this does consume a lot of energy from your battery, so you got to be mindful of your drive and not do anything that's going to hog a lot of the energy or you're going to start getting into those overcurrent over issues I discussed earlier. Um, also there is a, another option that I do allow in our um, LIG. Just because these are so expensive, um, I offer a third party option. I'll pull up a picture in a minute, I don't have any out on me right now but this is going to be our Bowiz motor and it's another product by Bowiz. I'm a big fan of their store. They do sell really good stuff that helps us build our bots. Um, I'll put all these links in the description to help out. Um, this motor is just like this one actually. Um, the difference is, is that it's a bit easier to connect. You don't have like this lip here that gets in the way of beams and these aren't like chamfered off I'd say. And what's weird is you actually do have this same exact plug. You don't have the 5292 pattern. Again, the outer port is a faster one. Your inner port, outer port is your slower one. I keep mixing that up today. Inner port is your faster one. So if I were to suggest what weapon motor you use, it's kind of hard because it really depends on your design. But for lifters, I would suggest trying to do two XL motors. Same thing if you're doing like an electric hammer and you're just trying to take a gear ratio in here and swing your hammer. 2XL motors is pretty good. Um, if you're trying to do a spinner, I would recommend, if you have one, a 5292 buggy motor. Um, not a knockoff like this one, but an actual real one. The knockoffs like this one can be fire hazard, somebody's cheap clone. So I don't use these with my third party battery packs, you never know. Um, or if you want to try the Bowiz motor, you could also try that. Um, that is a third party motor, but it works well with their products. And I've tested it, I could confirm that myself. Tested it in many bots. Um, so, yeah, if you have spinner weapons, your Bowiz buggy motors, and if you have lifters um, or hammers, your 2XLs, you could also get away with doing two L motors or a single XL for your spinner. Alright, so say you've got the parts already, um, I'm going to go with Bose 3.0, um, two powered up L motors, and say an XL just because my buggy knockoff is actually broken. Be careful which third party clones you pick, but 
Um, I'm going to go over how you actually set this up. So, um, all the wiring is very simple. All you got to do is seriously just plug in your motors. Keep in mind which um, ports you plug into. If I could get my camera to focus, you could actually see that there are numbers by each port and letters by the power functions port. So just keep that in mind. We'll just need to know which one's which when we um, set this up online on the app later. Um, so we're going to plug in our motors. Say I'll use just ports one and two. Those are going to be our drive motors. And then I'm going to get our weapon motor. Just plug it into this one. This is port number, port letter B. Alright, um, and now we're just going to set this up on the app. So you have two different options for apps that you could use that I know of. You have the actual Boas app that goes with their products. The problem with that is, is that you can't really hook up a PlayStation controller or any other Bluetooth controller. So you actually got to move your fingers along the screen, which I don't like to do when I'm fighting because I like to actually be able to feel my controllers when I'm paying attention to my robot. So, um, whatever you choose, but I don't really suggest that option. I've heard that they're moving into programming it so you can make controllers, but I haven't seen any of that yet. Um, the other option is an app called Brick Controller 2, which is completely different from their company. Um, you can actually plug in your Bluetooth controller into that, and that is how I like to drive my bots. Okay, so let's actually look into how you're going to set up your controller so you could control your robot. So um, first we're going to grab our controller. I have a PlayStation controller, but any Bluetooth controller should work. So for this controller, to put it in share mode, what we're going to do is hold the share button up here and the PlayStation button at the same time, and soon it will blink white, which means it's in share mode. Um, I'm going to go to my settings where I have my Bluetooth, turn it on, and then you should see your controller. For me, it's the second one because we have two controllers. Um, one controls the second bot. It'll connect, and then you'll notice your controller changes afterwards. And then I'm just going to go back to the app real quick. And now we are going to actually, or if I go back to the front, we're going to go to devices in the bottom and I'll see all of these devices because these are the ones I have worked with but um, if I pull up our bow is back here with our little wires plugged in I'm going to click the on button and search for it I don't know if it will actually find this for me because I've already hooked this one up so probably nothing is gonna happen yeah, you'll see something a little different your first time, but um, I know this is my unit one, and you'll see a solid green when you plug it in. Unless you're on lower battery, you'll see something like yellow, red, or green and blinking red. Um, but now I could actually play with any of the ports, so um, we plug into ports one and two. So when I actually slide these little sliders here, you'll see the motors move. So this motor is going to be your um, port one, and this one's going to rotate when I move this stick down here. Um, and we used port B before, so I'll use this bottom slider, B for bottom. Now we'll turn our weapon motor. So let's actually set this up for our robot. We'll go back to device. We're going to go back to device and we're going to create a new profile. I will call this profile test All right, and now all we gotta do is put in our controller action so I'm gonna go down to this or no I'm gonna click the default profile and now on our default profile I'm gonna add in some controller events so I'm gonna go to this plus here I'm gonna move the stick that I want to move so say I want my right drive set I'm gonna get this stick move it forward, this will sense it, and now I'm going to pick which port I want. So say port 1 is going to be my drive side, I'm going to say yes. Oh, um, I'm going to go back because it's actually on my unit 2, I'm going to go back here, select unit 1, and that should be good. Click check to save that. And now um, I'm going to put in another action, this time I'm going to move my left stick, and now I'm going to go to my second port. 
And keep in mind if you have two of your motors horizontally like this, if one is rotating forward and the other is rotating in the same direction, then this is actually going to be going backwards because you see, like if I have um, them each moving clockwise this way, this one's moving clockwise, so imagine if this is the front of your robot over here, you're backing up. When this is still moving clockwise, it's actually moving forward when you turn it around. It's just when you actually flip the motor, you flip the side. So if that's the way you are driving your robot, which is the most common way, you got to actually invert the direction of your wheel. So I'm going to save that, go back, um, and then I'm going to put one more event, which um, will be our weapon. I'm going to click the plus in the bottom. It's going to wait for it. I'm going to click this right trigger. That's my favorite way to do it. That's going to turn our XL motor in port B, so I'm going to put that there. And I also like to do this in case my weapons get jammed in some way, so I don't lose a fight, or lose my weapon at least. I'm going to click plus and do the opposite trigger. And I'm also going to go to port B and invert it. So if I need to change direction, I'll just click the other trigger. So now we should be good. Um, I'm going to click play. And now our bow should turn on. And we got all of our motors here. So I'm going to move the right stick now. And we're going to see which is our right side drive. Is this motor on our right? Now I can reverse it both ways and it will read. So that means this is going to be our left motor, and I'm just going to double check um, just in case I got this right. And that looks correct to me. And now let's try the weapon motor. So it's going to go one way when I put in the right trigger, and the opposite direction when I turn the left trigger. So try the right, rotates. And when I try to left trigger, it will rotate the opposite direction. So that's all you need to know to set up your electronics. And it's pretty much the same process if you got the Boas 2.0. It'll look slightly different, but it's very easy to figure out. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me in the description. I'll try to, or ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer to everyone. Um, I should be able to. If I'm not answering, just let me know. I'll get to you. Um, also, I just created a Discord to try to help get new people in the game. So if you have questions or you want to talk to other builders as well who have been in this for a while, it's the perfect place for you to go to. Um, so, yeah, have a good one. I'm going to make more episodes getting into Drive and actually building your weapon. This is just the electronics. So that concludes Episode 1. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Okay, I actually forgot to mention one last thing. Um, this is a little trick I've learned from some other builders, but if you plug in your controller to your phone when you're driving, you'll have a lot less delay issues. So sometimes, like, when you're in a crowded convention hall, you'll notice when you move one stick, your robot um, moves forward in that direction for three whole seconds before it actually reacts to you changing the other direction. So this helps out most of the time. It will take care of that issue. So if you're having delay issues, plug in your controller to your phone. Alright, now we should be done. Have a good day, everyone.